from Baofeng Tech. One of their top of the line radios, which I've actually had for a while now, and I probably should have done a review on by now, but I'm just getting to it because we're going to do a mobile install of five different radios, this being one of them. This is a 50 by 3 or a 50 X3 as it's written on the box, meaning it's 50 watts and three bands. It's a mobile radio from Baofeng Tech, and we're going to look at it today. <laughs> Hey guys, Ham Radio 2.0, where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of many, many things in amateur radio. Most of them are new, but sometimes we get something that's not so new. It's been around a while, but I've never reviewed it. I've never had it on the channel, so today we're going to talk about that. This is a Baofeng Tech from B-Tech. Go to baofengtech.com. You can find a lot of their stuff on Amazon, too. I'll put a couple of links in the description below. But this is a 50 watt. It's really a it's a tri-band radio, but it's only five watts on 220. Okay, so it's 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 two meters, 220 and 440, full power on two meters and 440, advertised five watts on 220. So it's 50 watts by three for tri-bands, but it's not 50 watts on all three bands. I don't know. That's just what they call it. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. I'm going to come over here to the overhead cam. We're going to take a look at the box real quick. I did an unboxing video um, for the FTM 300 a while back, and I made a comment in that video that said, I know that no one likes unboxing videos, but I had like half a dozen people come along and comment saying, I love unboxing videos. Do more of them. I'm like, well, okay. Can't please everyone, I guess. But Because I personally like doing the unboxing. Okay, so the radio I've already taken out. The radio would be right here. I don't have the radio in the box. <laughs> and, or the bracket, because I've actually mounted it in my truck already. But I'm going to go take it out of the truck, and I'm going to, you know, bring it in here and, and let everyone see what it looks like. We're going to put it up on the power meter here in a minute. So this fan actually attaches through the, the, four, the four holes in the fan the, in each corner. This fan actually attaches to the mounting bracket and it sits right underneath the body of the radio and this little uh connector here connects to the t connector for the radio that goes into the same power plug you would use to to power the radio this is just a ground unit here this is the microphone i'm going to need that eventually it's got an rj11 connector on the edge of the microphone this is the face of the radio and if you've been around for a while and looked at uh, certain things, this is basically a copy of the Yezu FTM350, which is no longer made by Yezu. So it's got ports on the... It's got a... Um, you can't really mount this face on the radio itself. It's made to be remotely mounted 100% of the time. And it's got a connector back here that looks like it's for a control head or the control cable that goes from the... Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to see if there's any markings on it. Yeah, it is right here. Control, it says right there. You can't really see it in the camera, but it says control right there, and it says mic right here. So the microphone connects here, the control head connects here, and it comes with a long cable to connect the control head, which is right here. Oh, there it is, right there. This guy here, I have no idea how long this is, but it's an RJ45 on the control head cable, RJ11 on the microphone. And you're going to see an upcoming video with me installing five new radios in the truck. This is the power cable, obviously. So that, that, and that. And this is the, this is the mount for the head. You can do suction cup mount right there. And the, the head of the radio fits on there like that. And then you can mount it, oops, <laughs> after you tighten it down, mount it anywhere you want to. Um, you don't have to use this suction cup head. You can use another type of mount. I think they might make something aftermarket-wise that you can buy as an accessory to mount elsewhere. I'm going to be mounting it to a Lido mount. So, um, so I'm not going to use the suction cup mount. But 
it is there that's there i'm going to get the radio connected up to the power supply and we're going to take a look and do some power tests with it so stay tuned okay before i connect this up i went i went ahead and grabbed the body of the radio out of the truck this is the t connector standard t connector uh the two wires out of that the two extra wires are what goes to the fan so this connects to the fan that mounts to the bracket that goes around the radio to keep the radio cool same thing on an ftm 350 from back in the day so there's your internal speaker that's a top firing speaker here's the top of the radio this is a microphone right here and this is control cable Thing's a little bit heavy, actually. Here's your FCC information, serial number, Baofeng Tech, tri-band FM transceiver. On the back, you've got a circular data port right there. Of course, SO239 for the antenna. You've got a line in and an external speaker. So I'm not sure exactly what the line in does, but um, it might be for some sort of APRS something something. I don't know. So I could read about that if I wanted to, but right now I just want to connect it up and let you guys see what it looks like on the meter. This is the radio powered up. Turn it up a bit like that. Okay, good. So you can see if, you, if you've ever used the FTM 100. There was also um, a couple years ago, ago, I did a review video on a Chinese radio called a Verotel VGC. I forget the model number, but it was it looked just like this one. That was out before this radio was. I had very bad luck with that radio running at mobile. It was the 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 receiver on it was terrible. It was just there there was a lot of noise, uh, a lot of intermod. It would pick up a lot of inter intermod, and the repeater from running down the road talking into some of my normal repeaters just was not good as compared to the previous both chinese and japanese models of radio i'd had in the truck prior to that so i have better hopes for this one because everything i've tried from baofeng tech up to up to today has been very solid their hts and their mobiles both so but the mobile installation and mobile usage of this radio along with several others will be another video later on so right now we're just going to go through the menus and this is you can see let me see here okay so there is a lock button here at the top left and then forward and back and i think what that does back obviously goes back oh okay it scans it so you can probably do long press You can long press the forward button. We'll change it from single display to dual display and back. Long pressing the back button does the same thing. Short pressing brings up a clock. I haven't set the clock yet. I just plugged this radio in. These are your function menus here. You can press the, uh, the their independent volumes on the right and the left for each band. You can turn the volume up and I'm sorry, not the volume. No, okay. I'm sorry. My mistake. This is the independent volume. The small knob on the right and left is independent volume. The larger knob on the right and left is uh, frequency control VFO potentiometer. Just like that. This right here. Same thing. Just like that right there. So then you can, uh, you can also press in these buttons. Pressing in the larger uh, channel control knob changes from the, the changes that this is your selected band right now. So when you key up the microphone, this is the one that's, this is the active band. Pressing this here changes it back. This is a PTT button right here, so you can actually PTT from the face. KC5 HWB testing. Just like that. We're going into a dummy load. I'm not going anywhere. B changes bands. B for band. Line in. Oh, interesting. 
I still haven't read to see what that does. AM broadcast radio. FM broadcast radio. Airband will receive airband. And that's your function. So F for function, you see the function one menu here has the, the V slash M, which is VFO memory, squelch, set, and reverse. Now we're on function two for scan, DW, set, and megahertz. So it's just got two menus down there. There we go, back to the two meter band, just like that. Now they're both on low power right now, both sides. This L here and this L here, that is for low power. So if we key up two meters on low power, uh, my, my meter right here is set on the 20 watt scale. So that's gonna be this middle bar right here. And that's about five watts on low power. It does have three power settings. And this, uh, when you're in the function one menu here, you can go to POW, which is power. That changes to mid. And there's about 10 watts on mid power. And then we're going to change to high. Right there. And we're pegging the scale, so we're going to go up here to the 200 watt scale. And that's about... 35 watts, 34, 35 watts, KC5 HWB testing. Again, we're going into a dummy load. I'm not actually transmitting outside of basically my yard right now. So now we're going to go over here to the 440 side. Get it back down here to like 446.0. Just like that. Low power with the L right there. And change this back to 20 watts. Uh, about seven watts right there. Mid power. About 15, 14, 15 watts. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to back up to the 200 watt scale. And that's about 46, 47 watts right there just under 50 watts according to this meter. There we go. Looks like it'll go to GMRS frequencies, but I do not think... Okay, so it's got a limited, a more limited capacity on the right side than it does the left side. That's pretty typical of most radios. Most radios that'll go to extra frequencies will only go there on the left side. That's common. Let's go here. There we go. I wanted to go to the 220 band. Now, 223.500 is the national calling frequency for FM simplex on 220. There's low power right there. We're going to go back down. Again, this is only supposed to do 5 watts on 220. Low power right there, it's pushing about 3 watts. Okay. Okay, there is no power button on that band, so you can only do low power. So if we, if we go up to, if we switch sides of the radio, this POW button shows up. But if we go back to the 220 side, it goes away. So you can only transmit on low power in 220. So it's pushing about 3 watts right now. KC5 HWB testing. Now, Baofeng Tech makes a... ...220... Uh, in fact, is that it right there? 220 amplifier. So this 220 amplifier, which you're going to see a video on this upcoming, and then, uh, and then you're going to see this in the truck, because I'm going to put this in my truck for the purpose of basically just running it 
for 220. I'm not going to really do much else on this radio. It does have APRS. Well, I think it's got a module. It's got a GPS module. I got to read up on that. I might try to do APRS with it, but at the same time, my FTM 300 has APRS in it. So that's probably what we use for APRS. But this one advertises a two to six watt input with a 30 to 40 watt output. So be a great 220 amp and I'll just put 220 only frequencies in my 50X3 radio and just click the amp on and just use it on 220. So that's my current plan on 220 for the mobile radio. And the reason that I'm going to use it that way is two, two reasons. Number one, I need a remote. I need the way that I'm setting up my truck. I'm going to remote mount all the heads. So I don't have a console in the truck anymore like I used to. I'm going to remote mount all the faces of my radios to the various rigs I'm going to run. And I cannot find anywhere. Second reason, I can't find anywhere a 220 monoband radio with a remote mount head. Can't find one. Now, I was going to run my Anytone 58883 model, which is also a tri-band, which does have a remote mount head and has the 220 side as 25 watts. It would do 25 watt output on, on the 220 side. And I might switch to that one. But I really like the big screen on this one so much uh, better than the, than the Anytone. Get back over here. This big, huge screen right here looks so much better. And, of course, I can... Go like that and just have it displaying 220, and that's it. So I can put it on 220, run it on low power, put the amp behind it, and have a 30 to 40 watt 220 rig. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. If it doesn't work out, I'll switch it out. I'll go with something else. Part of the whole mobile station installation is going to be, hey, let's see what works. Trial and error. Amateur radio. <laughs> 73 guys thanks for watching today let uh let me know in the comments below if you've used this radio this 50x3 what you think about it i did not include it in my best mobile radios of 2020 video that i posted a while back uh, because at the time i hadn't used it yet so i'm a little bit leery of it because now again i, I really like everything i've used by baofeng tech up to this date and i'm hoping that i will like this one as well but the verotel radio that came out a few years ago that was it's on my channel. You can go find it. It was it was terrible. I I did, I I sold it on eBay, and I think I sold it for parts are not working. And I'm like, hey, this radio technically works, but the performance on it is lax. And so, here you go, bid on it all you want to. I think I sold it that way. This was like three years ago. So anyway, 73 guys. Once again, thank you for watching. Put your comments below. Let me know what you think about this radio. If you've got one, if you've got any questions, put them below, and we'll catch you next time.